Yeah, yeah, yeah. I spoke to Raj. I was like, yeah, just try and stay in time, okay? Don't speed up, Raj. Don't yeah. speed up. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I asked Roger a million questions. Um, he probably, he probably doesn't want to talk to me ever again after my questions <laughs> I asked him. Um, but you know, it was so useful. That's typical. It was so, talk to you. It's yeah. true, actually. It's true. I'm a big fan of rock and roll. Um, have been for for a long time. Um, so the prospect of playing a rock and roll star it was, you know, something I'd love to do. Um, but then when I actually read the script as well, I saw there was there was a lot more to the story um, than than just that. There's a lot more to it than like the themes we've talked about before about identity and and family and and seeing the 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 pitfalls of success as well. Um, and I think it's just very interesting for an audience to see um, because we don't. We, we hear various things through the media, but we don't always see the inner workings of what goes on um, when becoming that successful. I, I was just relieved when I got the job because yeah. I wanted it so badly. And I, I, at one point, it looked like I was just going to get the offer in the, like, the next couple of days, and then I didn't hear anything for weeks. And I was just like, I just couldn't like relax until I found out what happened. So when I got it, it was just like a wave of relief. And then just like, just realizing how uh, how much of an amazing opportunity this was going to be, and yeah. they had you on IMDb as the character before you even got the even, job. This is it's happened to me twice before. Yeah, I've, the, like something came out in the press saying I got the part when I didn't have it, and uh, I don't even know how that happened. And then like all of my friends and my family are going, "Congratulations, you got the job!" And I'm like, "I don't have it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Freddie sees Roger and Brian playing uh, in Smile, and he's. He's drawn by the the fact they've both got great backing vocals. Um, they're both very talented musicians, and he kind of sees that talent and thinks about the potential of what they could create together, um, and approaches them essentially when he finds out that Tim has left the band to say, "I'm a singer. I can be your new new lead singer." Yeah, it was daunting for sure, but also to have all that material online, to have like hours and hours on YouTube to be able to watch interviews That's and true. kind of base your character upon that is, yeah. you know, is it's kind of a gift, really. So it was. I tried to look at it, try to frame it in that way, rather than try and just focus on the the scariness of the whole thing. There's a lot of you know great, technically great singers, but I think Freddie sings with such passion, and is completely in the moment when he sings that I think he really carries the audience with him, and um, I think that's what what made him so appealing. And I mean, there's there's certain there's some I could go through particular songs and particular live performances where there's there's certain notes that he hits and the way that he hits them which just kind of they kind of almost pierce your soul in a way you know and I think that's 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 what made him so special and then on top of all of that he's also a brilliant songwriter and responsible for writing Bohemian Rhapsody and these these classics that will be remembered for as long as as long as we can think of. Teenagers have said to me, "Oh my God, I never heard, even heard of Queen," Queen right. and now I like I'm listening to the album, you know. And I think it's amazing, you know, to like to have another generation of Queen fans. Their career was already has such a such a lifespan, but yeah, to keep that going and, and be part of that feels great. Yeah, this film has everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really does. I'm not just saying that. Selfishly, I think what I would like people to walk away from this film uh, thinking is. Hey, maybe we should um, maybe we should get back into rock and roll. Maybe we should have some more rock and roll bands. Mine is White Queen as it began. I don't know if you know that one. Uh, Live at the Odeon. It's specifically, uh, yeah, it's on Queen Two. Uh, yeah, it's just perfect. And there's like this amazing section which is about 90 seconds long, where it's just like in the live version where where they're all just vamping together, and it's just perfect. All right, great. What makes Bohemian Rhapsody so unique is that. No one, no one would ever have thought that that song would be a hit. You know, there's there's so many different genres in there. There's it's. I mean, this this EMI, the label, wanted to split the song uh, into into different songs because they thought it was you know there was just too much going on. There's too many genres. It's too long. And I think Freddie was like, no, this is my this is my vision. I'm gonna make this song. And if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, they don't. But it's going to be ours, and it's going to be entirely ours. And then it's just, by some stroke of genius, the entire nation went crazy for it. I'll be drumming along. I'll be Chris, uh, criticizing him. I'll be like, Roger, come on, mate. You're a bit out of time. Come on, sort it out. But really, you know, like we started as fans, but we've really become like Queen fanatics throughout this whole experience. So to actually see them perform live, again, it's going to be amazing. 
It was great working with him, and he took it very seriously. He was um, he stayed in his uh, his northern accent, his British northern accent, the entire time on and off set, and uh, took it home to his to his partner as well, I think. And um, but he was brilliant. It's just the, he's just the kind of guy who's just can't can't not be funny, you know. It was like he was just cracking us up all day long, all day long, and it felt like he wasn't even trying to, you know. He just he kept doing all these things. He kept. Uh, and before every take, he'd always be like slapping his wrists, going, "It's just for funsies and stuff like this." Which I know, like I do it, doesn't sound funny. When he does it, it's hilarious. It's just absolutely hilarious. Mm. Um, I actually haven't seen the final cut because I haven't been able to have seen an earlier cut. Is is thirty nine in there? No, no, it's no. not. I would say thirty. We play the song thirty nine in uh, Japan, yeah. and that for me was one of my uh, favorite days of filming and one of the favorite performances. I, so I, I missed that. I love that song. It's a great song. song. I was basically drumming you know, 10 hours a day, uh, intensively working with a with an instructor, uh, Brett Morgan is his name, very good drummer, uh, very good teacher. And um, it was really a crash course in drumming. And obviously, I'm to this day, I'm obviously not as good a drummer as Roger Taylor and never would be able to in that in that time frame, maybe not even in 50 years. Who knows, he's very, obviously a very talented drummer. That's why he, he is where he is. But um, but at least to, to do the best I could to convey his his style, his showmanship. There's a, like, I was trying to focus more on how he how he drums rather than just being good at playing the drums. You know. Let me start this one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start this one. My one of my biggest frustrations was with, with the uh, PG thirteen rating. You're not allowed to smoke very much. So like obviously this is the seventies. This is like rock and roll. They're like constantly like smoke and other things. And you know and like constantly just being told Ben you can't smoke in this scene. You can't do it. And I'm like Argh! it's driving me nuts anyway. So yeah. just chain smoking yeah. throughout. That's just basically, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're trying look to save at, your life. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to save your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've played people who are uh, who have been and gone, um, but I've never played someone um, someone who is living today. And it, it, I found it quite daunting. And I think it took me a while to get to get to grips with the fact that my job is not to be them. My job is not to impersonate them it's not to be exactly like them because there's there's certain things that I can't change to make myself like him we're physically different we're you know vocally we're quite different as well my job is my job is to is to give an essence of Roger and the strongest essence I can whilst also being true to the text and and serving the purposes of this film um, so it took me a while to get to grips with that but once I had I felt a lot more comfortable with that <laughs> the Queen often get lumped in the in the genre of I suppose rock and roll maybe, um, but there's so there's so much more than that. You know, there's it, I think what made them so unique is in in a lot of their songs they'll have they'll have some heavy rock um, material and then also then go into a kind of slightly more musical theatre or slight or opera or just really melodic and. And they really kind of played with those existing genres and and bended them and and to create a whole new genre which I couldn't even give you a word for. Queen, yeah. Um, he was concerned because I couldn't play the drums, and I told him I could. Um, little, Did you learn a little how white to? lie, yeah. And he, he was um, he was like, well, great. Can you put this song on on video for me, on tape for me? Um, so I basically went to like the local drum teacher and was just having lessons every day and just working solely on this one song, you know, um, and then I put it together. Which one was this? Uh, it was Doing All Right. Uh, I don't okay. know if you know that one, early, an early one. Um, so yeah, just focusing on that song, sent it to him, and then I had a, then I had a screen test, but he didn't respond and say anything about the drumming. So I, w <laughs> I went, so I was really confused. And it's been like, it was like four days and it's only like a three or four minute video. And so I was really confused, and I was going up to, you know, for this, this screen test, having no idea, I hadn't spoken to him since, I just got told through my agent I had this screen test. I went in there, and then, uh, I don't think he'd even watched it yet, so I had to do the screen test, and I was incredibly nervous, and, um, but yeah, it worked out, it worked but did out. You, um, I know that um, Brian May and um, Roger Taylor came on set, uh, did you have any feedback from them? Um, what did they think of your work? They were so supportive, they really were. In fact, actually, Roger was really kind to us last night, wasn't mm -hmm. he? 
made a point of saying to to all of us to the to the whole the whole cast not just the band the whole cast um you know how um how well they thought of the film and how they felt like it was uncanny like you know our, our resemblance to them you know which really means a lot to us because mm -hmm. you know you can't please every single fan obviously we want as many of them to be to be happy with the film as possible but everyone's got their own opinion that's just subjectivity but like to to know that the band are happy with what we did you know and that mm -hmm. they think Freddie would have been happy with what we've done you know there's definitely something that, that I think we're very proud of another one buys the dust